Virtual reality, a concept popularized in science fiction like Neuromancer and the film Tron, has spurred technological advancements and significant investments from tech giants like Facebook. Projections for VR gaming are optimistic, indicating a rapidly growing market with increasing demand for virtual and augmented reality devices. However, there are concerns about whether virtual reality and VR gaming will live up to their potential. Virtual reality, at its core, involves complete immersion in a simulated environment, providing a first-person interactive experience with a strong sense of presence. The idea of simulated reality was first depicted in Tron, 1982, a groundbreaking Disney film featuring a computer programmer navigating a virtual world to defeat a malignant AI. The concept of virtual reality as a computer-generated simulacrum gained prominence in William Gibson's Neuromancer, 1984, where he introduced the term cyberspace to describe a shared hallucination created by visual representations of computer data. This term is now commonly used to refer to the internet and the information highway. Fictional works like Tron and Neuromancer play a crucial role in the history of VR, influencing developers who draw inspiration from both science fiction and the real world to create realistic and immersive experiences. VR has captivated technologists, including Facebook's founder, Mark Zuckerberg, who acquired Oculus, the pioneer of modern VR gear, for $2 billion in 2014. The fascination with simulations and immersive realities dates back to panoramic paintings in the 19th century, designed to immerse viewers in scenes like battlefields. Even before the idea of computer-generated virtual worlds gained popularity, inventors in the 20th century experimented with stereoscopes and dual-screen headsets. The physiological basis of virtual reality lies in stereopsis, where our two eyes perceive objects from slightly different perspectives, enabling depth perception and a 3D view of the world. English scientist Charles Wheatstone described this phenomenon in 1838 and invented the first stereoscope. This device, patented in 1839, projected two slightly skewed photographs to create a 3D image, a concept similar to what VR headsets do for video and gaming today. In the 1960s, Morton Heilig, a cinematographer, came up with two virtual reality VR devices. One was the Sensorama, an arcade-style machine providing a multi-sensory experience. The other was the Telesphere Mask, a head-mounted display similar to today's VR headsets, using two TV screens for a 3D view. Following Heilig, the development of VR was mainly driven by contractors in U.S. defense programs. In 1966, Thomas Furness created the first flight simulator, and in 1968, Ivan Sutherland made the Sword of Damocles, the initial VR headset working with a computer. By 1986, Furness developed a simulator using data from aircraft sensors, turning Gibson's cyberspace concept into a virtual reality. In 1987, the Visual Programming Lab, VPL, sold the first head-mounted display, coining the term virtual reality. VPL also created the data glove for converting hand gestures into virtual movements and the iPhone HMD tracking head movements in a computer simulation. The 1990s saw a brief VR craze, with Sega and Nintendo attempting VR devices, but only Virtuality Group's VR headsets gained some traction in arcades. Commercially viable VR took about 15 years to emerge. In 2012, Palmer Luckey's Oculus Rift prototype, supported by a successful Kickstarter campaign, marked a breakthrough. The release of Google Cardboard and Samsung Gear VR in 2015, using smartphones for VR experiences, created initial excitement. However, Cardboard was discontinued and Samsung ended VR support in 2021. In 2016, consumer-grade VR headsets like HTC Vive, Oculus Rift, and PlayStation VR hit the market, offering affordability and high-quality gameplay. Virtuix's Omni, an omnidirectional treadmill for VR games, shipped in 2017, gaining attention, including a mention in the movie Ready Player One. By 2020, Various VR devices were available at lower prices. Meta's Oculus Quest 2 became a bestseller in 2020, 
outselling all previous Oculus headsets combined by 2021. Sony confirmed the development of PlayStation VR 2 for PS5 in 2021. In the 1990s, virtual reality, VR experiences were basic, and the equipment was either costly or limited to arcades. Home devices like Nintendo's Virtual Boy had heavy designs and caused eye strain with all red graphics. Arcade-based virtuality games had primitive controls and blocky graphics. Today's VR developers likely learned valuable lessons from the challenges of the 90s VR craze. Despite advancements, current VR faces obstacles. VR gear remains expensive and bulky, and user experience is a major hurdle. Headsets are either standalone with limited power or tethered to consoles or PCs, requiring developers to optimize games for various platforms. The most significant challenge is VR sickness, causing headaches and dizziness, discouraging users from extended play. Developers work tirelessly to overcome these challenges, offering a diverse range of VR games from both big studios like Capcom and Bethesda and indie developers like Ready at Dawn and Alchemy Labs, while indie studios have excelled in VR game development, Valve's Half-Life. Alex is considered a standout. Developers aim to enhance immersion by allowing players to explore their surroundings, use gestures for actions, and interact with in-game objects, all while minimizing issues like motion sickness and VR fatigue. In 2016, Modern virtual reality VR games emerged as the first consumer-grade VR headsets became available. Indie game studios led the way, releasing popular titles like Superhot VR and Job Simulator with simple graphics and unique gameplay. These games focused on interaction and creativity rather than realistic visuals. While most 2016 VR games were from indie developers, Batman Arkham VR, a AAA studio game, stood out for its realistic graphics and detective gameplay. However, it was limited in terms of movement. In 2017, AAA gaming studios like Bethesda and Capcom entered the VR scene with games like Skyrim VR, Fallout 4 VR, and Resident Evil 7. These titles brought awe and horror experiences, but some faced challenges like clunky mechanics and downgraded graphics. Lone Echo, developed by Indie Studio, Ready at Dawn introduced a novel movement system in Zero Gravity, earning recognition as the best VR game in 2017. Its multiplayer mode, Lone Echo Arena, even became the first VR eSport. By 2018, VR gamers had more affordable options. Beat Saber, an indie rhythm game, became a sensation with its lightsaber slashing gameplay, creative marketing, and continuous release of free music. It achieved financial success and overshadowed other good VR titles like Tetris Effect and Astrobot Rescue Mission. Asgard's Wrath 2019 marked a milestone in VR gaming, offering a photorealistic RPG experience with a lengthy campaign and advanced features like full-player avatars and immersive controls. The watershed moment in VR gaming came with Half-Life, Alex in 2020. Developed by Valve, it introduced groundbreaking mechanics like realistic weapon interactions and physics, boosting headset sales and sparking speculation about VR games entering the mainstream. It is considered one of the best-selling VR games two years after its release. In today's VR gaming landscape, Half-Life, Alex is considered the best, setting a high standard for developers. Gamers now enjoy a variety of options, from AAA titles like No Man's Sky VR and Borderlands 2 VR, to successful indie games like Vacation Simulator and Lone Echo 2. The evolution of VR gaming suggests a trend toward more immersive and interactive experiences. Developers draw inspiration from successful games like Beat Saber, Asgard's Wrath, and Half-Life, Alex, leading to the creation of clones, larger game worlds, and sophisticated mechanics. Lone Echo's Zero Gravity Game Arena hints at the potential for VR-based esports. As technology advances, headsets are likely to become lighter and faster, with standalone devices like the Oculus Quest 2 becoming standard for VR games. Developers face challenges in designing for VR, but they now have valuable insights into what works. 
gamers can anticipate a more immersive experience in new virtual worlds, a dream that has been cherished since the days of Tron. So, there you have it. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.